All right, CO2, let's review some basic Flutter commands. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Make sure that you have Dart and Flutter installed as part of the extensions here. So this icon here that looks like a bunch of squares, that's your extensions. So you're probably using it on files. Go to extensions. Make sure that you have at least Flutter and Dart installed as part of the extensions. If not, search for the extensions on the marketplace and install it. On the, the lower right hand section right here where the mouse is, uh, you can click on it. Right now, the default when I used it was Windows. And then you select Start P3 right there. And I'll start the emulator. And then right now it's selected as the Android emulator. And now you can do run without debugging and the emulator will start. I'm gonna use the dev tools. So you don't need to enable the dev tools. So select not now. You can also use the Flutter command line tools. Uh, so right now I'm in the debug console of VS Code. There's another tab for terminal, and from the terminal, you can run the Flutter commands. So one of the commands is Flutter channel. You can see what channel you're on, and we're on channel stable. The Flutter uh, version is now on 2.0.3. So if you type Flutter hyphen hyphen version, you can see the version. If you want to see the emulators, Flutter emulators will show you the list of emulators. Uh, this is equivalent to actually doing this run debug here, and then you select the device that you're using. I'm just going to show you some additional command line techniques so that you can follow along with the tutorial if you do want to use the command line tools. You can use either one. But because I'm using a command line, I just wanted to show you some of these techniques. If you don't want to use the, the GUI here, you just want to use it from the command line. So you type Flutter emulators. Emulator currently, I, I just killed it, so it's not started. And then the name of the emulator is right here. I called it P3. I changed the name to be shorter intentionally than the default name so it's easier for me to type on the command line. So if you do flutter emulators launch p3 then you can launch the emulator in this case it's a pixel 3 from the command line. So if you do flutter devices now you're going to see the device. So this is the name of the device that you need to run if you run it from the command line. So again, Flutter devices, device name is emulator 5554. So Flutter run hyphen D for devices. And it's gonna run the Android application on this specific device, which is the uh, Android emulator device. If you don't do this, it may run um, the desktop windows or the web version of the application. For development, use the Android version. Uh, I did have some problems with sound on the web and the desktop version. Um, I didn't look into it because I'm focusing the tutorial on Android and iOS and it does work on those two platforms. There's the hot reload is R, lowercase r. It's here on the commands, right? So capital R is hot restart. Q is quit. Print statements to show what's going on with the application. If you're using these print statements within Flutter, right? So this, a print statement is here on line 21. You have loading assets, right? But then there's a bunch of these warnings, 
that we might be getting from our graphics emulator on Android or other other types of warning. And this might be a little hard to see. So on the debug console, you have the same output, right? Where there's like a graphics issue here. So you can type flutter in the debug console. If you have flutter as a filter here, so I'm at debug console, there's a box here you type Flutter, you're only going to get the output from Flutter. So using this filter here, you can more easily identify the print statements that you're using in your code to see what's going on within your applications. Uh, this is a pretty simple way, and you don't have to figure out how to use the debugger for this technique. When you first create Flutter, if you create it from the command line, so you, you go Flutter create So let's say that you're doing flame on Sunday and you create this project, right? That's uh, using the default flutter, flutter create, and then the project name. So if you start VS code from this port, this point here without changing to the directory, you're going to run into some, um, so some problems because the, let's see. You've got different projects here. You're, you're not actually running it. You don't have your pubspec.yaml within this file structure here. So instead of doing that, what you need to do is, so I just created the flame underscore Sunday, right? As a temporary. You have to change directory into the project folder. And this one does have the pubspec.yaml. When it has the pubspec.yaml, it will make it a little easier if you're using the menu system from VS Code. Thanks to CO2, my tester, for helping me to identify some of the problems with the workflow earlier. Um, a lot of people do like to use these great Visual Studio Code tools, uh, not the command line. It, you know, it's nicer to use this. The two things is you do need to be in the directory for uh, where your project is, the public pubspec.yaml for the tools to work effectively. And then right down here on the lower right-hand side, the lower right-hand side of the Visual Studio Code window, you can select the edit, the emulator or the device to use. If you have a bunch of windows and um, other things installed on your system, you may not actually get it to run by uh, at, with the Android emulator by default. We'll be continuing on with our app, get this collision detection working here. So she stops on the platform. She's huge now, just so you can see it. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great weekend. Bye.